Okay, so um, I want to, before we go any further with images, just remind you about bleed and what bleed is. So on my page, I have this red outer line going just outside the page. That is the bleed margin. And remember, any image that we want to go right up to the edge of the page, actually, before we send it to the printers, needs to have um, uh, that image going beyond the intended page so they can trim it down afterwards. If you can't see that red line, it's probably because you've changed your views. Remember down here in the left, you can swap between normal view and preview. So normal view, you can see the bleed margin, preview you can't. So making sure I'm on normal view, I need to make sure that my actual image if I've moved it around in that frame at all, is going right up to the edge of that bleed. So I'm double clicking on the image to have the brown box and I'm just moving it down a bit. You can even do that with the arrows up and down, which can be quite nice. I'm going to go for something like this. Um, I know I still haven't feel, uh, fixed that overset text. It's on my list of things to show you how to do. Um, something that's actually very, very, very useful is to right click on an image and go to fitting. Under here, you'll have a preset called fill frame proportionally. So that will just make sure that the photograph that you've chosen fills whatever frame you've set out for it proportionally. Um, you don't want to use fit frame to content because that will just make the frame much bigger so i'm going to control z that um, but you always might want to tweak it um, if you do just use fit frame proportionally like i said i think it actually looks better a bit higher up so i've double clicked on the image got to the brown box which is the actual image rather than the blue box which is the frame that tells us how big that image is going to appear on the final page. That's probably not the most brilliant explanation I've ever given of that concept, but hopefully by playing around with it, you'll get your head around it. Okay, quick way to fix this overset text problem. It's a great time to introduce text wrapping. So text wrapping um, is usually um, located on your right here, but if you don't have it, you can just go to window and text wrap and that will bring up the box. So how does text wrapping work? Well, it's pretty simple. Um, if I don't have any text wrapping applied, um, then uh, anything that I want to wrap around it, like this text, isn't going to wrap around it. It's just going to sit on top of it. However, the second box across here is wrap around bounding box. I click on that and now that text is automatically being um, uh, wrapped around this image. It won't go on top of the image. So how big do um, I want my little margin between the photo and the text? Because if you look at this, at the moment, right now, that text is almost touching this photograph. And I personally think that if I open up my preview option, that for me looks really squashed and messy. Don't like it at all. Well, as the gutters on all the columns of 5mm, I think I'm going to take the same approach here um, with my actual uh, photograph. And I'm going to put a 5mm um, wrap. So basically what that means is the text is never going to get closer um, to 5mm within this. OK, so that's how you fit a photo to a frame and that is how you text wrap the photo.